Now, if Jesus were to have a business card, I'm being a little silly, right? But if Jesus had a business card, it would not fit on a two-inch by three-inch business card. Everything that he is. It would have to be in such microscopically small letters that you would need a microscope to read it. Amen? And what's interesting about the Bible is that as you look through the Bible, you'll see many facets of who He is in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And God reveals Him through uh, four shadows and types. And so as you get to know Jesus, as you're reading the Old Testament, all of a sudden you'll discover that's who Jesus is. And I'd like to tell you who He is today. All right? I hope you brought your praise and worship with you today. I hope you brought your shouting shoes as we preachers say today. Come on. Because I want to tell you who Jesus is today, all right? In Genesis, He is the Word of God creating the heavens and the earth. He was the promised seed of the woman who would bruise the head of the serpent. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, brother. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb whose blood was sprinkled on the doorposts of our hearts so that we could escape the bondage of slavery. Come on. In Leviticus, he's our high priest who mediates our situation so that we can come before the living God. In Numbers, he's the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, an ever-present guide. In Deuteronomy, he's the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he's the captain of the Lord's host, a conquering warrior leading us into our promised land. In Judges, he's our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he's our kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he's our trusted prophet and the pure-hearted shepherd king who rushes out to face our giants all alone. Amen. In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra, he's the rebuilder of the broken down walls of human lives. In Esther, he's our Mordecai, our advocate, risking his life to restore us to royalty. Come on. In Job, he's our ever-living redeemer. In Psalms, he's the Lord, our shepherd, who leads us in the paths of righteousness. In Proverbs, he's meaning personified. In Ecclesiastes, he is wisdom. In the Song of Solomon, he's the loving bridegroom. In Isaiah, his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Come on. He is the suffering servant who who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Come on. In Jeremiah, he is our righteous branch and the spirit that writes the law of God in our hearts. In Lamentations, he's our weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he's the wonderful four-faced man and the river of life bringing divine healing to the nations. In Daniel, he's the fourth man in the fiery furnace of our life. In Hosea, he's a faithful husband pursuing an unfaithful bride. The old time preachers used to say he's forever married to the backslider. Amen. In Joel, he's the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. He's the restorer of all that the locusts have eaten. In Amos, he's our burden bearer. In Jonah, he's our great foreign missionary. In Micah, he's the messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he's an avenger of God's elect. In Habakkuk, he's God's evangelist crying. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. He's the reason to rejoice, my friend, even when your fields are empty. Come on. In Zephaniah, amen, he's the great reformer. In Haggai, he's the cleansing fountain. In Zechariah, he's a fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and uncleanness. Oh, come on. I'm talking about Jesus this morning. I'm talking about who your God is. Amen. Let's get a full revelation of who Jesus is today. In Matthew, he's the son of man. In Mark, he's the miracle worker. In Luke, he's the Savior born to us. In the city of David, Christ the Lord. In John, he's the Son of God. In Acts, he's Christ the risen Lord, the hope of every nation. In Romans, he's the righteousness of God given to us by grace and by faith. In 1 Corinthians, uh, he's the stream of blessing that flowed from the rock. In 2 Corinthians, he's the triumphant one given victory. In Galatians, he's our liberty for whom the Son sets free. In 
is free indeed. Come on. In Ephesians, he's the head of the church. In Philippians, he's your joy. In Colossians, he's your completeness. In First and Second Thessalonians, he's the blessed hope and the soon coming king. In First Timothy, he's the one mediator between God and man. In Second Timothy, he's your stability. In Philemon, he's your benefactor, our redeemer, restoring us to service. In Titus, he's your faithful pastor. In Hebrews, he's your perfection and your great high priest. In James, he's the life at work in our faith. In 1 Peter, he's your example. In 2 Peter, he's purity. In 1 John, he's life. In 2 John, he's your pattern. In 3 John, he's your motivation. In Jude, he's the foundation of your faith. And in Revelation, he is your soon coming king, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world and the King of Kings, the one that will reign for 1,000 years. Let me ask you something today. Who do you say that he is? Amen. Is he big enough to solve your problem? Is he big enough to step into your family situation and make a difference? Is he big enough to open the door for you to find a new job? Is he big enough to save your children? Come on. I declare that he is in the name of Jesus because he's everything that he ever promised that he would be. Hallelujah. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Come on. He's the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He's the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, always is, and always will be. He's unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and he brought healing. Come on. He was pierced and eased pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He's risen and brings power and he reigns and brings peace. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The schools can't explain him. The leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him and the people couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. The new age can't replace him and Oprah can't explain him away. Come on. He's light, love, longevity and Lord. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, and God. He's Aaron's rod that budded. He's David's sling, and he's Moses' staff. Come on. And this is what he said. He said, I am that I am. Hallelujah. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. Come on, church. Is he strong enough? Is he powerful enough? Is he big enough? It's time we get a new revelation of Jesus. He's strong. He's big and he's powerful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, well, pastor, I got up this morning. Man, you know, the enemy was all in my mind. He was telling me it's not going to happen. I felt like giving up. I felt like it wasn't going to be there. Let me tell you something. It's time we cry out, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Amen. Because I've got news for you today. God is a, Jesus Christ is bigger than your fears. He's bigger than your insecurities. He's bigger than your failures. He's bigger than your past. He's bigger than your enemies. Come on. He's bigger than the, your haters. Come on, somebody. He's bigger than your lack of resources. He's bigger than your limitations. He's everything and anything that you'll ever need Him to to be hallelujah now I need this water oh hallelujah Woo! no man he's great I have a friend named Salvador Beal he's a retired pastor now but many years ago we worked together and uh, he tells about when he got saved he he, he, see, he called himself the meanest man in Big Spring, Texas. And he said his enemy robbed him of everything. He lived in a house, broken down, just a bed and a chair. He went to his daughter-in-law's house and went in there, and they were having the service in that little house. And all of a sudden, Jesus revealed who he was. And Salvador Beal stood up, and I'll never forget him. He, he, he said... He said, I just had three words, ain't he great? 
Ain't he great? Ain't he great? Ain't he great? Come on, when you realize all he's done, when you realize his love, when you realize his forgiveness, when you realize his wisdom, when you realize his power, you just have something you got to say. Ain't he great? Hallelujah. He is great and wonderful today. Come on, can we just give him a big praise? One more praise for King Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I feel kind of almost like stopping right there. Amen. Oh, he's so good. He's so great. Who do you say that he is? Who is Jesus to you? Who is he to you? You know, sometimes we get in our head that, you know, that he doesn't do things today. He does things today. Listen to some Celebrate Recovery testimonies. They'll encourage you and lift you up. You'll look at them, you'll think, how in the world did this person ever get so entangled in so many areas? And then as they come to Jesus Christ, you realize, wow, he's able to untangle all of that. He's able to restore this. He's able to do this. I'm telling you something, God is in the, he is, he is wonderful. He's wonderful. Amen. That, you know what Lee told me the other day what wonderful meant? It means full of wonders. Hello. Jesus is wonderful. He's wonderful. You say, well, Pastor Bob, you seem like you're just a little bit of a fanatic about Jesus. I'm sorry. He's the champion. I know LeBron James thinks he's the champ. He and he is. And I love LeBron James, all right? He's a good guy. I love Stephon Curry. I love all those guys. Amen. But let me tell you something. Jesus has been the champion for a long time. Come on. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. He went right down into the pits of hell. And let me tell you something. Jesus did not go to hell to suffer at all. He went down there because there was someone down there who had a set of keys that belonged to him, all right? And so he went down into the pits of hell, and he said, Satan, where are you at? You got something that I need. I come after my keys, all right? I come to get the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And besides that, I need to bruise your head. So I'm about to put a bruise on you. Because let me tell you something, I'm bringing captivity captive, and he crossed over into the land of the of, of, of the where the where the righteous live, and he led them the captivity captive. And the scripture says he gave gifts unto men. This is the Jesus that you and I serve today. Come on, this is the Jesus that's gonna. And you know, there's the, the scripture tells us that in the end times, during the tribulation period. That all the armies of the world are going to be gathered. What kind of a generation is it going to be that's going to think that they can raise their fists to God and fight against even God? Deceived, fighting against God. They'll be gathered around Jerusalem and the Bible tells us that this same Jesus, amen, who walked on the planet, the same Jesus that saved my soul and your soul, that Jesus is coming back riding a white horse. Come on. He's got on his, on his thigh, he's got a, a name written that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. He's coming riding a white horse out of heaven with all of heaven behind him. They're all going to be dressed in white. What kind of an army dresses in white? An army that does not need to fight. Now Jesus, he's going to be dressed in red. His vesture is going to look like it's been dipped in blood. And he's going to say, okay, I'm done with y'all. Done, boom. But the word of his mouth. I can, I can give you the scripture that tells you how it's going to happen. It's all written right there in the Word. Amen. The Bible says that He's going to come in the greatness of His power. He's going to step down on the, on, the Mount, uh, uh, on the Mount of Olives. And the Bible says it's going to split in two parts. Just the greatness of His power touching the earth once again. It's going to cause a ripple effect to cause a valley to be, to, to, to be cleared out. And the Scripture says He's going to walk right over. And He's going to walk right up on the Temple Mount. He's going to take His place as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's going to reign for one. 1,000 years, CBS, ABC, NBC, Facebook, Twitter, they're all going to be, they're all going to be flying around. Did you see what happened? Jesus is back. He's coming back. Come on, that's the Jesus that you and I serve today. 
Who do you say that he is? Well, I'd just like him to do something in my family. Let me tell you something. This is what the Word says. The Word says this. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, you and your household. Hello? Come on, I believe. It says this promise is, not, is, is, is unto you and to your children. Come on, somebody. We can believe God for our families to get right with the Lord and to get saved and come into the house of God. We have a big God today. Would you stand with me today? I'm not